queue up the dark match and uh, let the internet know we're here. Probably should uh, see closed chrome because it is just absolutely miserable at uh, see. absolutely miserable and consumes entirely too much memory. fighting game characters rolled up on random select and felt like that would be a uh, pretty entertaining matchup for the dark. Nearly getting a pinfall early in this contest, Victor Darkstalkers. Big body slam flipping Senton. Oh, my apologies. Um, Anybody that is tuned in has uh, woke up this morning feeling pretty miserable. I'm going to try not to sell it uh, over the course of the show. Ooh, another near fall from Victor Darkstalkers. One, two... Bridget Guilty Gear able to kick out, but how much more does Bridget have left in the tank? Big Lutez press, but Bridget getting a hand on the bottom rope. It's always amusing seeing that spot, which is absolutely a the game like oh okay, I actually really like how the uh, whoever made this victor like set up their AI that's clearly like the finishing sequence that they want them to go to that's gotta be it one two three count ball 
pinfall victory going to Victor Darkstalkers. Also, before I like actually go on, go on. Like, I had to hear that. Uh, had to hear that theme over and over when like editing um, some music for some created characters. And I guess I never noticed it until then. But yeah, that theme is just like a really menacing voice saying wake up and smell the coffee with some like goofy filters on it. And I don't know why, but that's just absolutely hilarious to me. But um I'm gonna have to see let's see, actually that's not what I wanna do. <clears throat> Alright, we're gonna go ahead and get into tonight's show. Let's see. Give me just a moment here. Trying to fight with a couple other things at the same time. And one more of these before I actually hit the button. House Wrestling fans, go ahead and get on your feet, make some noise, as we are about to start another episode of Blake's House Professional Wrestling. House Wrestling fans, we have once again another absolutely stacked card from top to bottom on tonight's program. Of course, we have the week in and week out classics that uh, you have come to expect from Blake's House Wrestling. That, of course, being the Maglo Open Challenge. Additionally, we have a special exhibition this week. Champion versus Champion, Terrell Benjamin versus JPW's own heavyweight champion, A-Man. Uh, no titles on the line, but we wanted to make a concerted effort to make sure you, the viewers, get to see both Stable's top stars in action. And uh, what better chance for that than to have the champion of Blake's House Wrestling going head-to-head -head with the champion of Judgment Pro Wrestling in a special exhibition match. Additionally, of course, we have the King of Fighters television title. Uh, I've got some bad news for the folks at home, as uh, Shenzhou has not been cleared to compete this evening uh, due to suffering a concussion from uh, Cesaro's neutralizer last week. Um, took a severe head hit to a steel chair and uh, he will not be able to compete on tonight's show. And that means the team of Shenzhou 
James Holloway and Blake will be forced to vacate the championship and we are going to have to determine a new KOF TV champion uh, on tonight's show. But uh, before we get to that, let us uh, go ahead and follow up on Alfonso's Japanese excursion where he is going head to head with Yano. A deviously tricky wrestler that you can absolutely not afford to underestimate. So, uh, he got a singles victory against Kenny Omega earlier this year. So he is just as capable of besting anyone in this pro wrestling business. But uh, right now he is going head to head with Alfonso. And uh, let's go ahead and get right into this match so we can follow up on uh, Alfonso's Japanese excursion. Starting things off strong here. Not allowing Yano to get anything going. And you can't afford to allow Yano to get started. He's so tricky, so devious, that the moment he gets any kind of opportunity, you are in jeopardy. Big headbutt from Yano. And Yano applying illegal leverage with that chokehold. But uh, Harada, go ahead and break up that illegal choke. Loving blow to the back. And right now, looking a pretty even contest thus far. Placement of that jab and then that low roundhouse taking Yano's legs out from underneath his legs. Alfonso just planting Yano with that DDT. On. Alfonso shot into that corner thermical, but able to get out before Yano's able to get any further offense going. Both sides just swinging wildly at one another, and once again, Alfonso so very aware of where he is in the ring. Just escaping that corner turnbuckle before Yano able to capitalize. However, Yano does have the upper hand as he stomps that lower abdomen of Alfonso. And a thumb to the eye. Hold on, Alfonso. Fireman's carry Buster right in the center of the ring. He's going to grab a chin lock to try and slow Yano down even further. Another low roundhouse and Yano planted to the mat and Alfonso once again just trying to work a hold here, just trying to really cut Yano off. Yano shot in that corner turnbuckle. Alfonso stomping a mud hole, walking it dry, but Yano able to protect himself. Big sharpshooter. Yano so close, but so far from the ropes, but he will not be submitted. And now it's Yano's turn to work the legs and lower back of Alfonso, but Alfonso just powers out of that hold so quickly. On paper, it looks like, oh my God, shooting star press, one, two. Only a two count. And that is exactly why Alfonso is on this Japanese excursion. You know, he's finding new offensive maneuvers, new strategies. He's going to come back fresher, come back with more ideas. And going to be just that much more prepared for when he returns to a Blake's House wrestling ring. But uh, as I said, or I was about to say before that amazing display of athleticism from Alfonso, this appears. 
appears to be a mismatch, and it is certainly a mismatch on paper. But Yano is so crafty. He is extremely capable of turning that match around in an instant. Ooh, picture perfect drop kick from Alfonso. But uh, Alfonso just not opening the door for him, not giving him that opportunity that he needs. As a big fireman's carry buster, and Alfonso attempting to add energy or injury to insult, but. Yano trying to reverse course with that big vertical suplex. Both competitors getting to their feet, but Yano sidewalk slam goes for the cover. One. But Alfonso, a lot more gas in the tank. It's going to take so much more than that to put Alfonso away, but Yano's going to figure out exactly how much more it's going to take. Yano thrown to the outside, and Alfonso One, standing alone in the two, center of the ring. Three. Big thumb to the eyes again from Yano, and Yano shooting Alfonso into the corner, and now... Oh my god, stunner! Alfonso goes for the cover, one, two! But still not enough to put Yano away. Big German suplex, just throwing Alfonso over his shoulders. And Yano's fired up! Once again, working the legs and lower back of Alfonso here, this time with a half crab. Another big low blow, and Harada gonna let them fight. And this time, getting a count two out of it. Yeah, looking like he's running out of gas. He's tried nearly everything to put Alfonso away, but now hold on here. Alfonso holding in some sort of foreign object, but Harada in classic Harada fashion, he is going to let them fight as both competitors forearm smashes, but Yano gaining the upper hand, big tackle, but rolling elbow from Alfonso, and once again Alfonso goes up top, and this time a rolling moonsault, or rolling a uh, senton rather. Belly-to-belly -belly overhead suplex launching Yano, but Yano scrambles to his feet. Wants nothing to do with Alfonso's continued assault, but Alfonso, entirely uninterested, just going to give him another one. Big back drop, or back body drop. Loving blow to the back from Yano. Yano just doing anything he can to stay in this contest now. Trying to break this man's back. Make him humble with that camel clutch. Big sleeper hold, but Yano still holding on somehow. Big chop to the chest, but Alfonso totally unfazed. And another sidewalk slam. <laughs> Gonna have to wake up pretty early in the morning to catch Yano sleeping, and Alfonso made very much aware of that with that uh, low blow when he attempted to take Yano's back. Giving Yano a warning this time. It looks like they will be permitted to continue to fight. Alfonso, once again, working the back and once again going to that sleeper hold, but Yano still hanging on somehow. Arm drag to power out of the hold, but Yano just totally dead here. Somehow getting a second win, runs the ropes, and big Lariat just collapsing Alfonso onto the mat. Ooh, another low roundhouse, taking Yano's leg out from under his leg. He powers out of whatever he, Alfonso attempting to do off that, that slingshot into the ropes. 
Alfonso going to that tried and true DDT. On double underhook. Face buster, that's gotta be enough. No, Alfonso not finished yet. Back switch, but. Yano taking a minute to appeal to the hometown crowd. But Alfonso's so dizzied by that back elbow that uh, he's still able to capitalize. So Alfonso once again going double underhook face buster. That's got to be enough. Cover one, two, three count fall. And Alfonso's Japanese excursion going extremely well. You know, the purpose of this excursion was to give him a lot of different opportunities against a lot of different types of opponents. But uh, so far, he is 3-for-3 three three on his uh, Japanese excursion. So expect when Alfonso returns to the United States that uh, he is going to be a better, stronger, faster, more crafty competitor. And we will have to see exactly what he does when he returns to a Blake's house ring. And uh, did notice the uh, raid just as my uh, first match tonight was about to go live. So, very much appreciate that. Appreciate the raid. Appreciate the subscriptions. Um, just good stuff all around. Um, yeah, you guys tuning in basically just in time for the show proper to get started. But uh, let us, as I said, we have a absolutely stacked card this evening. So let's go ahead and get into our next match. Oh, appreciate the uh, subscription, Blake. Um, actually, I think this month, certainly with the subscriptions that I've gotten, uh, we are getting real ass payout this month, boys. So, very much uh, appreciate all the uh, support from the uh, Blake's House Wrestling audience. Well, Alfonso, I've got some good news and some bad news. Um, you were on tonight, but you did win your match. Um, generally speaking, you have been in the opener because the direction with your character is your character is still in Japan, so we are watching your matches live via satellite. So you come on in the opener, and then the rest of the show happens. But, um... Regardless, um, do you want to get back into the uh, actual card? We've got a lot of wrestling to get through tonight. So we have got John Newton going up against Matthew Knapp. So it was a good match. I will say that much if you uh, do end up going back and watching the replay. But um, yeah, let's go ahead and get into tonight's contest as we uh, have our first official match from the from a Blake's House wrestling ring. So uh, let's go ahead and get into that right now.
for John Newton, the brawler of Judgment Pro Wrestling. I believe this is going to be his uh, first singles contest in several weeks. And it is going to be going up against Matthew Knapp. Another enigmatic performer of Blake's House Wrestling. A man that can beat you in a lot of different ways as he is. He does have amateur wrestling experience, but is no stranger to fighting unorthodox, fighting dirty. And uh, if you will notice in John Newton's corner, he is seconded this evening by Robert Walsh. A little bit of an extra insurance policy as uh, this ongoing feud between Robert Walsh and John Newton and uh, Judgment Pro Wrestling's own The Firm. You know, these two guys have each other's back. You know, just absolute ride or die friends to the end. Uh, so they're going to be looking out for each other even in uh, their singles matches. But right now, they cannot be looking at The Firm as right now John Newton has to focus on his opponent tonight, that being Matthew Knapp. But Newton definitely making the most out of this opportunity, trying to play to the crowd a little bit, get himself and just get this Lakes House audience fired up for this match. But Matt, as I said, you know, very technically proficient competitor. Like, do not let the way he has chosen to win matches fool you, as he can and will out-wrestle you if he has a mind to do it. Newton shooting Knapp into that corner turnbuckle, but Matthew Knapp scrambling out before Newton has an opportunity to capitalize. Another big elbow to the back, and Matt cross arm breaker, and Newton just inches away from the rope. You could see he was just stretching out as best he could. Ooh, ducking that uh, big right hand, but Newton sidestepping the tackle. And Newton really wants to make this a brawl. That is where he is most comfortable, and right now he has kind of suckered Matt into exactly where he wants him as both competitors trading hard shots, but Matt taking advantage, hitting uh, Newton with his own offensive strategy as he delivers those mounted punches, but Newton responding back with mounted punches of his own. <clears throat> and once again, Matt starting to work the arm. We're seeing a lot more traditional grappling from Nap here. I'm curious as to what exactly has caused the change in uh, strategy, change in mentality. But it seems he does want to prove he can beat this man in a wrestling match. An absolutely beautiful German suplex getting a count two out of it. And once again, that tackle sidestepped by Newton. Newton protecting himself. Ooh, big spine buster. Goes for the cover one, but only a count of one. Big kick into the corner, but Knapp getting out before he can suffer any more offensive efforts. And another beautiful German suplex, very nearly getting the victory there. And another German suplex, but Newton now returning to that brawling style, just repeated hard shots to the head and a falling fist to the gut. Toe kick, but Matt sidesteps before uh, Newton able to continue that any further, but a big spine buster planting Nap onto the mat. And once again, Newton going up top for another falling fist. As he applies the sleeper hold, just trying to slow Nap down as momentum seems to have shifted. Newton's Law, center of the ring, goes for the cover. One, two. Oh, so close. Nearly defeating Knapp. Knapp once again going to that picture-perfect suplex, but this time John Newton able to get a hand on the bottom rope. Hey. 
And now it's John Newton possibly surprising Nap. As Newton seems pretty comfortable in a wrestling situation, but... Oh, so very close. Another suplex, but another situation where John Newton just so aware of where he is in the ring, able to get a hand on that bottom rope, protecting himself. Ooh, flash roll up, that could be it. One, two, no. Even that is not gonna be enough to put Newton away. Big pile driver just planting Matt on top of his neck. Is that enough? No, even that. Big arm drag, but Newton not allowing Nap to progress any further, but that reversal had to be all instinct as Newton just woke up dazed. Big takedown, but no, reversal. Three count fall. And that was absolutely not the outcome I would have expected as John Newton in some critical moments of that match out wrestling Matthew Knapp reversing that mount tackle into a pinning predicament for himself and that is a spectacular victory for John Newton Yeah, I, you know what, I'm actually 100% in agreement with you. That is not a 68% evaluated match. Like, that was a fantastic match. Like, a ton of back and forth. You really couldn't tell who was going to win it until the last minute. Um, you know, Nap kicking out of uh, Newton's finish. Both of them reversing each other into pinning predicaments, getting several near falls. That was a good match, but hold on just a moment, as I believe uh, something's going on with our video feed, if you'll give me just a moment here. Hey, Matt. Justine, what's up? I uh, wanted to see how you're doing and let you know that uh, NWO has some opportunities for you if you're interested. You know, you're kind of not doing much with Blake's house. Uh, might be on a losing streak, so if you're interested in joining, hit me up. Thanks. And not completely clear as to what was going on there. Um, we'll have to check back in on that momentarily. Just something going wrong with our uh, our video here. But as I mentioned just uh, at the open of tonight's show, Shenjo not cleared medically to compete in tonight's KOF TV title match. That, of course, means that he will be forced to vacate the title and uh, we are going to decide a new uh, KOF TV champion tonight. Um, and I believe we can get one camera backstage really quick as uh, James Holloway not taking this news particularly well. Uh, so let's go ahead and get a camera backstage before uh, we can get into our first contest. Wait, what do you mean you're not coming? Jamel, we have a match... What do you mean you're not medically cleared? Who told you that? You're you're fine. No, I don't, dude. No. All right. All right, we'll figure it out. Seriously? Like every time we start to do something, you're just gonna keep throwing curveballs at us and fucking us over? It's getting really ridiculous. It's like you are actively trying to keep us down. Whatever. Time to start doing stuff. So some very ominous wording from, oh, son of a bitch. 
I have done this thing again where I did not make it team entrances. Uh, individual entrances for the first round of competition and then we can get uh, we can skip that for the second round so uh, as you can see we've got uh, four teams vying for the vacant KOF TV title on tonight's contest and the first team making their way to the ring, led by Taka Michinoku, is the team of Suzuki Goon. Taka, of course, a legend in the world of professional wrestling. Of course, you've got the wrestler with, I quote, a voice like Mariah Carey in Tai Chi and the technical wizard that is Zack Sabre Jr., but they are going up against the Yagami team and making her way to the ring first is Vice. An absolutely cool competitor. That cruelty matched only by her stable mate, that is mature. So expect a sadistic style of offense from these two. And of course, this team led. Of course, the Yagami team led by Iori Yagami himself. A man with the power of flame making his way to the ring. like both team captains starting off in the ring. Taka Michinoku versus Iori Yagami. And uh, in the interest of moving through this tournament quickly and crowning a new TV champion, this will not be elimination tag. It is first fall to the finish, folks. So anything could happen. Drop toe hold from Taka Michinoku. And right now, as I said in the open of this match, Taka is a wrestling legend. Ooh, big forward B from Yagami. It is going to be very hard to out wrestle Taka, and it is going to be equally difficult. Ooh, big low D from Yagami as well. It's going to be equally difficult to out wrestle Zack Sabre. Unfortunately for Sabre, of course, he is wrestling in a world where Boris Johnson is the Prime Minister. But uh, hopefully that does not affect him too Shoot. much over the course of this contest. Ah. Big European uppercut, and right now he's coming out swinging ah. against both members of the Yagami team. Vice, of course, the legal competitor. And it looks like Sabre will bring in Taichi, but... Vice just powering out of that two-on-one situation. Ooh, big roll-up, but Vice kicking out immediately. Ooh, big shoulder breaker from Vice. Vice so dangerous. Despite her size, I have not seen a competitor she is not able to lift and then slam onto the mat. And just like that, big deadlift German suplex. Just planting Tai Chi into the canvas. But Tai Chi, a technically proficient competitor in his own right, rolling through, trying to surprise Vice with that pinning predicament. Vice now bringing Mature into this contest. 
Taichi not focusing on the legal competitor, and that could cost him another big shoulder breaker, and that's going to set Mature up to do repeated kicks to the crown, and that's going to bring in both members of Suzuki Goon. And Harada, total lack of control here. Big open hand chop to Taka. And hold on a second here. Oh my god. Mature just coming out swinging off the top rope here. And just not allowing anyone from Suzuki Goon any quarter. And just as I say that, big double vertical suplex from Tai Chi and Saber. Zack Saber starting to work that arm a little bit here. Ah! 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 Gotta wonder if uh, ah! Mature allowing herself to get beaten backward into her own corner is strategic on some level. As uh, she is just inches away from Yagami, able to make the tag. Big double drop kick. And once again, going with those repeated kicks to the crown. <clears throat> Big shoulder block from Yagami. That standing CD, so devastating. Another big forward B from Yagami. And it looks like the Yagami team in total control. But some excellent teamwork from the team of Suzuki Goon trying to keep each other in this contest. Ooh, goes for a big flying chop, but both members of Suzuki Goon able to get Give out up. of the way. Give up. It looks like both teams electing to make the tag here. Ooh, STO and Sweet. And Taka just totally overwhelmed in this two on one situation, but now has Mature blocked in this Boston Crab here. Sure, just punting Taka right in the back. And repeated shots to the head, just crumbling Taka to his knees. And once again, going for that mounted knees to the back of the head. Big DDT from Taka Michinoku. And once again, just locking on that hold. Give up. Ooh, big standing D for Mature. Doesn't quite hit its mark, but that double drop kick from Suzuki Goon will. Ah! And excellent teamwork from Taka and Saber. Give up. As Zack Saber Jr. locks on that guillotine choke. But Vice, a choke and a slam of her own. Zack Sabre once again just trying to work a hold here, but too close to that orange Gatorade turnbuckle. And that's going to create opportunities for the Yagami team. Shoot! A big choke slam, and so far away from the Suzuki Goon corner. That was nearly it right there. And it is absolute chaos in the ring here. Once again, another guillotine choke, this time applied to Vice, but Vice able to quickly escape the hold. Ah! Saber, big European uppercut, and that will allow him back to get 
to get back to his own corner and bring Taka Michinoku back into this contest. Two repeated chops to the chest, followed by a big DDT, roughly in the center point in the ring. And knee square in the chest of Vice. Vice able to get to her own corner and bring Iori Yagami into this. Sandwich Lariat just crushing the throat of Taka Michinoku. And big forward B planting him into the mat. now going up top and big jumping D goes up top once again and applies a chokehold and that's going to be enough Taka Michinoku submitted by Iori Yagami and this will be the first team to advance to the finals of this tournament. But uh, before we get back into tonight's contest, I believe some of you came by a little bit late. So let me go ahead and fill you guys in on what some of the bigger events for tonight's show are going to be. Uh, as I said earlier, we have a champion versus champion match. Terrell Benjamin versus A-Man. And that will be immediately before... A match that I am sure you have all been waiting for week in and week out. Of course, that being the Maglo Open Challenge. Um, sure, you can tell just by the state of the tournament. Tonight's main event will be the finals. We will be crowning a new KOF TV champion on tonight's show. And thus far, it looks like the Yagami team have the early lead. However, we do still have two teams yet to be introduced into tonight's show. So we will have to see how they handle themselves. But uh, let's go ahead and get back to the match card here. As we have Zero Lopez. We have Colby. Oop, hold on a moment. Um, give me a moment here. All right, apologies. Uh, but yeah, we have... Let's see. Zero Lopez. We have Colby going head-to-head. -head. As uh, Zero trying to make a name for himself in the uh, Blake's House wrestling world. And this would be a huge opportunity for him if he was able to best fan-favorite competitor that is Colby. But... Uh, not waste any more time talking about it. Let's go ahead and get into this match. Zero Lopez walking to the theme of the two-time, two-time mystery game champion theme of Zero Lopez. He is going to have to put every one of those skills to good use here as he is going up against a monster of a competitor that is Colby. And the crowd already excited. The bell hasn't even rung. 
and the crowd already on their feet for Colby. But big kick to the gut from Zero. As uh, we begin this match with a little bit of a feeling out process. Zero knows exactly how dangerous Colby is. So doesn't want to be too aggressive too quickly and have that aggression turned against him. Zero going for a cover early, just maybe trying to test Colby. And Colby returning the favor with a big lift and then drop to the mat. Colby getting a count of one out of that exchange. Colby starting things out strong, going with those heavy right hands. But Zero finding his mark with two kicks to the gut. And make that three, and Colby down onto the mat. Cover one, but only one. Oh my god, Atomic Lariat so early in this contest. Colby clearly not taking Zero lightly at all. Zero has got to be dazed from that vicious shot from Colby. We're going to have to see if Zero is going to be able to turn this match around. Big step up in Siguri right to the back of the head. Colby, big pump handle driver. One, two, only two. Zero showing a bit of resiliency as he locks on this chokehold. Colby able to power his way out of the hole. Big low blow, and Colby now going to those mounted punches, those vicious shots unprotected to the back of the head. Zero responding back, basement drop kick, square into the face. Colby outsmarting Zero a little bit there, and once again, just gaining the upper hand. You forget? Oh my god, Colby running the ropes once again, and another Atomic Lariat, but Colby not finished with zero yet. <laughs> Big swinging neckbreaker. And a sling blade, but Colby to his feet immediately. Zero responding back, another swinging neckbreaker. Tries to take his back, and... Big reverse DDT, transitions right into a chokehold. Come. Colby in that hold for quite some time as that life just drains out of you. And another big reverse DDT and Zero once again going for that choke, trying to put Colby away. Big boot to the stomach. Oh, but hold on, zero. Surprise, roll up, one, two. Oh, that was nearly it right there. Big pump handle slam. Zero once again shooting Colby into the ropes there. Pop-up cutter. And zero now in the driver's seat here. Zero going up top and covering nearly half the width of the ring with that diving elbow. Ooh, but Colby sidestepping that insecurity, but hold on, Puerto Rican destroyer. And Zero goes for the cover, but rolls Colby into the ropes. Hold on just a moment here. No, big bulldog. Colby not electing to go for that atomic lariat just yet. You've got to figure Zero's kicked out of two. Well, he's kicked out of one. He avoided the second. Ooh, big in Seguri, back of the head. And another big boot to the stomach. Ooh, 
Ooh, big rolling elbow to the back of the head as well. Oh, and Colby going for a cover here. That is that rolling elbow going to be enough? It nearly was. Zero barely able to get a shoulder up after taking two atomic lariats earlier on in this contest. You've got to figure if he's got one more in him, this match could be over. Zero going up top. Hold on just a moment here. Big dive kick to the back of the head. And a 450 splash for good measure. But hold on, Colby now, surprise roll up, one, two. Oh, that was nearly it right there. Ooh, big Insiguri doesn't quite find its mark. Back switch and another reverse DDT, zero running the ropes, sling blade. But Colby to his feet. Another massive slam and Colby possibly just too worn down to get to the top of that turnbuckle at this point in the match. Big Insegiri from zero. Zero getting his back, but Colby with a big cutter just shutting off Zero's momentum. This is anybody's match, but hold on. Another massive slam center of the ring. That's got to be it. Colby setting up. Lariato! Cover. One, two, three count, four. And Colby taking the victory in tonight's contest. Zero, so very close, but could not quite overcome the monster that is Colby. But, um believe it is time folks we've got a uh, pretty lively chat this evening let us go ahead and set up a battle royal to determine who oops who is going to be facing maglo in tonight's contest i'm certain i have an armor king Let's see. Let's see, you want the bear? We can get the bear. Let's see, actually, you know what? I'm gonna put in one of my votes. He was not actually booked on tonight's show. So let's go ahead and give Sterling a shot here. But uh, that still is going to leave five slots available <clears throat> to see who is going to be facing Maglo on tonight's show. So I'm going to veto Drill because I have plans for Drill on later on tonight's show. Uh, I can do that, Nick. Um, let me see. <coughs> uh, aside from... Uh, a man's the only person that's booked tonight, so if there is somebody that you want to get in a match, like you are welcome to submit somebody. Uh, I can do that.
Yeah, I kind of thought um, with because I do want to have a little bit more focus on the MMA division. I do have an MMA match tonight. Uh, Frank Vista, as well as Jackal, who we haven't seen in a while, um, should definitely start showing up. So that thought has been in the back of my mind. Oh, I did miss uh, Christine. Oh, actually, I am going to also veto Christine because Christine is also actually booked tonight. Uh, let's see. Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. Uh, let's see. So we've got a lot of options as far as that goes. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see. I've got original Blue Demon. I've got severely outdated Lucha Underground characters. I don't think I've got any CMLL guys, at least none that are currently in CMLL. Uh, and Helico, uh, I can do that. All right, that's still gonna leave two more slots. And let's see. And do apologize, uh, Blake and Chris er, and uh, Warzala, that your submissions got shut down. But you will see those guys later. Uh, I am certain I have a Brock. So let us do that. Uh, question is. Let's see. Yes, yeah, so we do have a Brock. Let's see. And if I can put my own shit in. Uh, let's see. Put uh, Naso in this, as we were just talking about some MMA stuff, and we do have technically, I would argue, at least three MMA characters, possibly four, in this match already. So let's go ahead and uh, queue up with this. We have a incredibly diverse lineup. It is very much anybody's contest. So uh, let us go ahead and get into this over-the-top rope battle royal to determine who will face Maglo. Fight. And as always, at the start of these matches, it is very much anybody's game here. On oh, someone already busted open. It's difficult to tell exactly who that is in the chaos of this match. Uh, let's see, excuse me, it was uh, Angelico busted open, but I absolutely could not tell you what. It is too difficult to follow this match with eight competitors in the ring. Yes! Big sandwich in Seguri to Lesnar, trying to take the, the man with the biggest target is such a difficult statement to make as we have Brock Lesnar, we have I'm a Bear, and Sterling certainly belongs in that conversation of dangerous competitors. And Armor King, of course, one of the most deadly Rudos in the Tekken circuit. This match, certainly not one that Frank Vista is accustomed to fighting in. He is a more tactical, a more technical competitor. The chaos of these eight-man battle royals are certainly not what he is used to. 
We're going to have to see if he's going to be able to adjust over the course of this match. But uh, he has been in thus far. And I believe that was uh, Natsuo getting planted by Sterling's giant choke slam. Big tombstone pile driver from Armor King. As Natsuo just delivers repeated mounted punches to Brock Lesnar. And that is exactly what I was talking about with respect to Frank Vista. In a one on one situation, he had the clear advantage, but that put him in a predicament where he had his back turned to two different competitors, and that has cost him. Now Lost Cobb, a little bit disoriented by that rake to the eye from Ama Bear. Give up. Big snap suplex from Vista. And, and Helico, right now, looks like going one-on-one -on -one with Sterling as the two isolate themselves near that blue Gatorade corner. Ooh, big Northern Lights suplex, but Sterling getting a foot on the bottom rope. Ooh, F5! And, oh my god, burning hammer from Frank Vista. This match, still just absolute pandemonium. Give up. Give up. Vista repeated kicks to the crown, but Natsuo kicked to the jaw, and Vista was once again unprotected. Looks like Natsuo. Three amigos to Frank Vista. And flying forearm smash. And it is just so difficult to keep track as all eight competitors still in this contest. Even eight minutes into this match, and Frank Vista absolutely punished by three separate competitors. Flashy roll-up from Angelico, but Cobb able to get a hand on the bottom rope. Ooh, big Olympic slam from Vista, and Lesnar just planted into the mat. Natsuo nearly eliminated by Armor King. But we are still at nearly the 10-minute mark, and no eliminations thus far. Hold on. Buzzsaw kick just taking Angelico's head clean off his shoulders. Hold on, just a moment here. And I believe Frank Vista just eliminated himself and Armor King. With that slam to the outside. Possibly a little bit of animosity between the two of them. That had uh, developed over the course of this match. Big arm bar to Natsuo. Giant choke slam from Sterling to Ama Bear. That's gotta be it. One, two. No, only two. Ama Bear showing the resiliency of an actual bear. Oh, hold on to someone. Oh my god. That does not get any easier to watch, folks. As Sterling attempting to break the fingers of Brock Lesnar. And oh my god, Brock Lesnar returning the favor. German suplex just launching Sterling to the outside and scoring an elimination. And F5 just crushing Ama Bear. Lesnar going for the cover. One, two, three count fall. And Brock Lesnar, an absolute monster of a competitor, scoring another elimination. But hold on, Natsuo reversing the F5 into an armbar. But Mario was distracted. Even if Lesnar had submitted, Mario not there to 
check on Brock Lesnar. Got big deadlift German suplex. Oh! Northern Light suplex and armbar. Both Matsuo and Ka both working the arm of Lesnar, trying to take some of that power away from him. And Las Cobb scoring a submission elimination. Natsuo is out of this contest. We are just down to Brock Lesnar, Las Cobb, and Angelico. Ooh, possibly setting up for an F5, but maybe Angelico thinking his chances are better if there is another competitor in the ring with him and Lesnar. Big uppercut to the stomach. And another sandwich in Siguri. And it looks like that is the strategy from these two smaller competitors. But it doesn't seem to matter. And Helico sent flying over the top rope. Las Cobb in the ring one-on-one -on -one with the Beast Incarnate. And a belly-to-belly -belly overhead suplex. And Brock Lesnar scoring another elimination, throwing three competitors tonight over that corner turnbuckle. And we now know who is going to be going one-on-one -on -one with Maglo tonight. And that is the Beast. Brock Lesnar. But, um, we have still got a lot of show left ahead of us tonight. Of course, we still have that KOF TV champion. Uh, I mean, he's a pro wrestler, so probably. Um, there are basically two people in professional wrestling that I trust to not be absolute garbage. Um, and then everyone else is just somewhere in between, like, probably not great, too awful. But, um... But yeah, so Maglo gonna have to protect this house from Brock Lesnar, who is probably shitty. But uh, Maglo doing a fine job of protecting this house ordinarily, but... Uh, as I was mentioning before we got into this segment... We have to crown a KOF TV champion tonight. And, of course, the competitors in the Maglo Battle Royal are voted on by the fans. We had to turn two of those competitors away because they had another match to get ready for this evening. And uh, that match is taking place right now. Introducing first for the team that is extremely online. Of course, you all know him as the Share Zone. The enigmatic skeleton. But hold on, of course, let's see the second member of this team. Of course, he is the Iceberg. Was briefly suspected of being Drill. But uh, is nonetheless another very online individual. But uh, of course, the captain of this team. 
You can see him on Wednesday nights on adultswim.com slash streams. That is, of course, Drill. But uh, they are going head to head with the Rosales. And I know we mentioned week in and week out, something was missing from that team. And Tyler believes that he is the missing piece of the Rosales organization. So we are going to have to see exactly how well he handles himself All right, baby. when tagging with the husband and wife team that are the Warzalas. Mr. Top 16, he is already in the top 16 of competitors in this tournament. But, uh, you've got to figure he is looking for that number one spot and he is going to have to get through. Team of Drill, Ice-T and the share zone to get it, but big belly to belly suplex to start this match off. Drill, a little bit of fancy yeah. footwork here. <laughs> Rosala responding back. Big body slam. Picture perfect Samoan drop. And looks like Rosala bringing Tyler into this contest early. <laughs> Tyler shot into that corner turnbuckle, but Tyler responding back. Vertical suplex to the outside, and looks like both teams content to allow Drill back into the ring. Give up. Tyler looks like he's trying to just rip the head clean off of Drill's shoulders. Drill getting the best of Tyler right now. Tyler bringing Christine back into this contest, but they have to go toe to toe with the iceberg. And Ice T appears to be up to the task in these two on one situations. <coughs> as he has thus far out wrestled Christine at every step. Ice T just repeated mounted punches to the back of the head. That finally shaking Ice T just a little bit, but Ice T in total control and just setting up the share zone for this big leg lock here. And Christine retreating back to her own corner. Hopefully giving the Warzalas a moment to regroup, but. Thus far, the share zone in complete control. Big clubbing blow to the back and... Two big kicks to the stomach, but Warzala, who possibly setting up for that patented elbow drop, but the share zone had it scouted. He got to his feet immediately, bringing Ice-T back into this contest. Rosala just working the share zone over and trying to orchestrate a momentum shift for his team. And you can tell he is just looking for an opening to hit that patented Rosala elbow drop. But Ice-T not giving him that opening. Ice-T goes for the cover and both competitors getting a count of one. Warzala oh. connecting with that patented Warzala elbow drop, and that's going to clear out Drill and the share zone from their own corner. And 
Marzola now bringing Tyler into this contest. But Ice-T going back to his own corner. Now electing to bring the share zone into this match. Ooh, big sit-out face buster from Tyler. The share zone just using that skeleton skull of his. And now raking the face with some sort of foreign object. Give up. Just trying to take Tyler out of this match any way that he can. Big backbreaker and now Tyler just... Boston Crab working the lower back further, but the share zone able to break the hold. The share zone going up top. Big diving knee drop, and the share zone going back to his own corner now, bringing Drill back into this contest. And it looks like the uh, team of the Warzalas and Tyler now bringing Christine back in, and Christine seems to be in better shape at this point. Hold on just a moment here. Big spike pile driver out of the corner. One, two. It's hard to believe that this team has never tagged together. Big shot to the crown and Christine now. Possibly setting up for the patented Rosella double drop of her own and that will connect. And that completely clears out that blue Gatorade corner. Only getting a count of one from Mario here. Christine raking the face, but that kick to the gut will put her onto the mat. Oh, Christine thrown into that corner turnbuckle. Hold on just a moment here. The share zone putting Christine in the tree of woe and is kicking her square in the stomach as she collapses to the mat. Big Spine Buster is going to create an opening for Christine to get back to her own corner and bring Warzala back into this contest. Big double power bomb. And Warzala patented Warzala elbow drop. But that Orange Gatorade team just getting out of their own corner a little bit too slowly. Shot for the crown and Warzala goes for the cover. One, two. Two, only two. Big double drop kick from Christina and Tyler. And like I said, this team looking a lot more cohesive than you would expect. A team that has never fought together before. Big reverse tombstone from Drill. But Drill belly to belly overhead suplex. And Warzala not yet finished. But neither is Drill as he delivers two brutal kicks to the ribs of Warzala. <clears throat> Repeated open palm strikes. Warzala possibly setting up for that patented elbow once again, but Drill to his feet. Oh, Warzala trying to connect with a headbutt, but Kami Goye from Drill. And Drill connects with the poison mist. Warzala retreating to his own corner. Possibly going to give himself a moment to shake that off. Big sandwich lariat and just repeated open palm strikes. Pushing Ice-T into that orange Gatorade corner. And big palm strike once again from Ice-T. Oh, both Tyler and Warzala just clubbing blows to the back of the head of Ice-T. Excellent teamwork from Warzala and Tyler now. But big scissor kick from Drill now. And Warzala swinging wildly with that steel chair. Christine alone in the center of the ring, but Warzala and Tyler just taking it to Ice-T as the count hits 16. And 
Warzala goes for the cover here. This could be it. One, two. Oh, that was nearly it right there. Big double drop kick from Tyler and Christine. It is still anyone's match here, folks. Oh, that is such a long distance for Tyler and Christine to cross here. Fortunately, Warzala able to power out of the hold on his own. As Warzala just punishes the share zone. Big stomach crunching maneuver from Warzala. But this fight so very far from that orange Gatorade corner. Big low roundhouse taking Warzala's leg out from under his leg and now working the arms and neck and Ice-T going to get the victory. Warzala unable to get back into his own corner, but a fair showing from this new trios team of Tyler and the Warzalas. But uh, we have still a lot more show to get through here tonight. As uh, we have the current Shoot League champion. That being Craig Tonga. Going head to head. with a real shooter of Blake's house. Oops, that's not where I wanted to be. In Drew Serpa. This match, of course, going to be non-title, but I thought this would be another good exhibition of what our stables MMA divisions are capable of. So uh, let us go ahead and get into this contest right now. confident competitor and you've got to be confident you cannot let Tonga's presence shake you because if you step into the ring with him and he senses that whatsoever the match is already over but a uh, mindset is not enough Ooh. Drew going for that double leg takedown early. Showing his wrestling background here. Big suplex, but Tonga scrambles to his feet. And uh, where we saw in Tonga's last match, where it was... It turned out to be grappler versus striker. Now this is going to be... At least Drew is going to want this to be a grappler versus grappler matchup, but... Tonga could create a situation where he is also a very accomplished striker. And if he sees that uh, this matchup is going to be more effective for him if he uses his legs and his uh, wrists and elbows, then that is exactly what he's going to do. But it looks like right now, at least, he's going to attempt to out-wrestle Drew Serpa. And it appears to be a relatively even contest thus far. Both competitors just trying to gain the upper hand, but 
Both of them so quick to get to their feet. As they know just how dangerous the other competitor is. We see both competitors very familiar with a uh, ground game. Both highly proficient grapplers. And that's going to play a big role in how they approach this match. And another big backdrop. Now Tonga going to that strike offense that he is so well known for. But Drew protecting himself from those strikes so effectively. But just as I say that, three massive elbows to the side of the head. And that's created an opening for Tonga to start to work the leg. And this is where things can spiral out of control for you and you're fighting against Tonga. Great. As once he starts getting that submission offense going, it is so difficult to keep him off of you. And that is exactly what he's done thus far. And hold on a second. Drew rolling through. But Tonga once again going to that submission offense. Just trying to pick Drew apart literally limb from limb. But Drew making it so difficult, he refuses to be out wrestled. Give up. Give up. He goes to that double leg takedown. Does not find its mark. And Drew once again protecting himself from that back position and now goes for the cover once again. One, but only one. Kami Goye right to the side of the head, but Drew immediately to his feet and rolls through for another pinning predicament. Give up. Give up. So difficult to really piece together exactly where this Give match up. looks like on the scorecard. I've I had to say where we are right now, I give a slight edge to Tonga. He has gotten more significant strikes and holds in, and there he scores the first knockdown of this contest. But Drew getting to his feet after a count of five. And big small package bomb too. And that was nearly a pinfall victory. And rolls him up once again. Drew just reminding Tonga, you have to out wrestle me. Give up. If you Give can't, up. Give up. and I am, I have just as much of a chance in this match as you do. Big lift and then drop. Serpa goes for the cover once again two. and gets a count two. Tommy Goye once again, but Drew to his feet as we go into the second round. You had to ask what my scorecard looks like. It would be 10-9 in favor of Craig Tonga for that first round. As uh, he was the only competitor to score a knockdown, but those near falls from Drew make this match. Uh, just as I say that, that striking offense from Tonga just so very effective. An admirable effort from Drew Serpa as he did very nearly make good on his game plan to out-wrestle Craig Tonga, but Craig Tonga's striking ability was just such a difference maker <coughs> that uh, where Tonga lost points on the ground he more than made up for in the stand-up. As uh, he will win this contest by knockout.
And uh, coming up next, folks, we have a special exhibition. As I said at the opening of tonight's show, we want to make a particular effort of showcasing both divisions' top talent. Um, after the historic first ever title defense of the Judgment Pro Wrestling Heavyweight Championship, we want to make sure that JPW's top stars get featured on Blake's House TV. Additionally, of course, this is Terrell's first ever single, excuse me, singles match since winning the Blake's House Heavyweight Championship. So that being the case, this is going to be an excellent display of uh, just what both divisions should be capable of. So uh, let us go ahead and get into this match right now. Terrell, of course, momentum is not on his side, as he has not picked up a victory since winning the Blake's House Heavyweight Championship, but uh, right now making his way to the ring, a competitor with all the momentum in the world. That is A-Man. As his theme plays for this crowd, this capacity crowd, of here to watch some Blake's House professional wrestling. Terrell, despite his small stature, a difficult man to overpower. That being said, A-Man is certainly an overpowering force. But uh, thus far, coming out fairly even in this test of strength. Terrell actually briefly gaining the upper hand here. <coughs> and if you needed a reminder, this is why, despite his stature, Terrell is the champion of the heavyweight division. He can go blow for blow, match in power with just mountainous competitors like A-Man. But this match is just getting started. We're going to have to see if Terrell has the gas tank to keep up with A-Man later on into this contest. As A-Man is such a difficult man to keep down. Big slam from A-Man and A-Man transitioning right into that sharpshooter. Uh, Terrell now locking on that cross face chicken wing. Trying to slow A Man down further. And looks like Terrell just trying to wear A Man down with submission holds here. That's a uh, giant killer strategy. Trying to pick the bigger man apart piece by piece. Ooh, big boot right into the chest. And transitions once again into that camel clutch. But A-Man just powers out of the hold. It's going to be a long match for Terrell, but Terrell thus far seems to be up to the challenge. Ooh. Big suplex from A-Man here. But unable to capitalize any further. Ooh, big rolling lariat. Goes for it once. Doesn't find its mark, but will the second time. And a big back elbow. 
And A-Man just massive choke slam here. That could be it already. Goes for the cover. One, two. Oh, that was nearly enough. Terrell already just reeling after that devastating choke slam. And Terrell just grabbing a hold, trying to slow A-Man's momentum a little bit here. But maybe I'm underselling Terrell here. Terrell. Oh, big diving elbow, but A-Man rolls out of the way, and A-Man now getting back up top, and will connect with an elbow right into the back of Terrell, and Terrell is dazed, but... Ooh, massive lariat from A-Man, but Terrell to his feet immediately, and the two are just battling it out in that orange Gatorade turnbuckle. Big, another massive rolling lariat from A-Man, and A-Man is that big body press he's so well known for that has put away so many competitors, but it will not put Terrell away just yet. A big boy senton from the big boy that is Terrell Benjamin, and another headbutt trying to equalize things here a little bit, but A-Man, once again, giant choke slam goes for the cover, one, two. But it's still not enough to put Terrell away. Who sidesteps the big boot. Who rolls through here. And big Sambo suplex. Terrell once again. Big boy Senton, but A-Man to his feet so quickly. And brain buster from A-Man. And Terrell now once again is dizzied, but not out of this fight just yet. Yeah. And that elbow drop will connect, but A-Man getting a hand on the bottom rope. But A-Man now looking a little bit winded here. Terrell making this giant bleed, but a devastating spear could put Terrell out of this match. No, Terrell to his feet, and hold on just a moment here. Burning hammer right in the center of the ring. This could be over if Terrell gets the cover. One, two... Oh, so very close. Oh, devastating punch to the gut. And hold on, this once again, go for that big body press, and it will connect. Cover. One, two, three count fall. And Amen, besting Terrell but in a contest that was very much anybody's match. Terrell kicking out of A-Man's best efforts on two separate occasions, but A-Man returning the favor, kicking out of that burning hammer, that sure killing maneuver that Terrell likes to go to to put matches away with. But... If you thought Terrell had lost a step, I can safely point to this match and say, don't underestimate the Blake's House champion. And I want to believe something going on with our video feed once again. Hold on just a moment here. Hey Sterling, it was fun talking with you the other week. You did a good job. See some real potential in you, buddy. Uh, if you're interested in having an opportunity with the NWO, let me know. We got a lot of spots open at the top of the card. Probably put a title on you soon if you want. Hope to hear from you. And not totally clear what's going on here, but We'll have to get back to that momentarily, but right now we have the Maglo Open Challenge. Of course, you know that the winner of the Maglo Battle Royal was the Beast Incarnate, Brock Lesnar. Maglo, of course... Defending Blake's house against all comers. 
and that includes monstrous individuals such as Brock Lesnar. Well, we will have to see just how well he fares against Brock Lesnar in the Maglo Open Challenge. So let's go ahead and get into that match right now. Maglo.bandcamp.com Man, always ready to protect this house. But uh, if you have been watching professional wrestling for the last 10 years, you know just how dangerous this man is. Maglo certainly has his work cut out for him. Lesnar already. Big headlock takeover. Maglo looks like he's trying to out-wrestle Lesnar. It's so difficult to figure out exactly what your game plan should be. Lesnar, absolutely devastating striker, but when you try to out-wrestle him, he does that to you. Some competitors have had limited success trying to be faster than Brock Lesnar, but thus far, Lesnar just sending another competitor to the outside as he did on three separate occasions in the Maglo Battle Royal. And this match will continue directly in front of the announce desk. I can see Maglo just applying that leg lock right beside the apron. Maglo sitting out for the cover early, but Lesnar pushing him off immediately. A one count. Maglo connecting with that double arm DDT. As he goes to some of those signature holds of his that he knows are going to be effective in gaining some offensive momentum. And momentum is absolutely critical when going up against somebody like Lesnar. Ooh, Lesnar to his feet so quickly. It's so hard to keep him down in a match. But Maglo hitting that airplane spin. And that is going to get the crowd fired up for him. And he is going to need every bit of that crowd energy as he is getting into a striking contest with a UFC champion. But thus far, he appears to have Lesnar on the ropes. Or at least is in control in this contest thus far. Forearm smash to the side of the head, and Lesnar returns the forearm smash of his own. So Maglo once again going to that patented airplane spin. And slamming Maglo to the mat. But I said there, Lesnar, a UFC heavyweight champion. His strike so devastating, but hold on, Maglo now locking on that patented spinning toe hold. He is pulling out all the stops in this contest, but so is Brock Lesnar. Suplex, repeat, suplex, repeat, suplex, repeat. As he tries to throw Maglo around the ring, and Maglo is dazed. Big forearm smash to the side of the head. And F5, right in the middle of the ring, goes for the cover. One, two. Oh, so very close to besting the people's champion, Maglo. But Maglo somewhere finding that inner strength. 
And Lesnar trying to squeeze that inner strength out of him with just a series of suplexes. And just amazing display of power from Brock Lesnar. That could be it right there. And it is. Brock Lesnar getting the pinfall victory with that triple power bomb. Just absolutely crushing Maglo. And Maglo on a two week slide here. Like, certainly putting on a great match against Brock Lesnar, but it just wasn't quite enough to secure the victory. But uh, let us go ahead and get into tonight's main event. We need to figure out who the... King of Fighters TV champion is going to be and this match between the Yagami team and Team Drill will determine who is going to be going into next week holding KOF TV gold. So let us go ahead and get into that match right now. Originally had planned on just skipping entrances, getting right into this contest, but I believe this is the finals. This is tonight's main event. Let's go ahead and give both teams their moment in the spotlight as they make their way to the ring. Yagami, the man who put away Warzala in the opening contest, now enters the ring, and that just out of pure fighting ability. You have to give this to the Yagami team, but the team of Drill, the Share Zone, and Ice T, all thoroughly unpredictable competitors. Ice-T, of course, a legit tough guy of a martial artist. Or, excuse me, Yagami put away uh, Takamichi Noku. My mistake. But a legit tough martial artist. But uh, Drill and the Share Zone, absolute wild cards. It's so difficult to predict how this match is going to go. We are starting things off. Captain versus Captain. Drill versus Iori Yagami. Iori shooting Drill into the corner, but Drill so crafty. Causing Yagami to just go careening into that corner, but hold on. Drill now shot to the outside, and he's got to take on the entire Yagami team by himself. Got to wonder. All right, it looks like now the Share Zone and Ice T getting involved. As uh, this fight spills out right in front of the announce desk. And Mario's count is at 15. Vice looks like she's going to try and steal this one. 
Mario's count to 18 seconds. So very close. And Yagami with the Maiden Masher runs the ropes. But big body block planting drill onto the mat. Give up. And this will once Give again up. clear out both aprons. Give up. But it looks like the Yagami team in total control right now. Oh, big Insiguri to the back of the head. And Iori bringing Vice into this contest. Drill so far away, but oh, just barely able to escape the grasp of Vice. And big Flapjack and Cutter. And hold on just a moment here. Drill literally rolling Vice up here. And that's going to buy some time for Ice-T to kind of get a measure of the situation. As Ice-T and Vice just trading chops to the chest. Vice's stand A just a little bit more effective. And Vice now bringing Mature back into this, or bringing uh, Yagami back into this match. Mature still on the apron. Ooh, stand B and forward B connecting at the same time to the top and side of Ice-T's head, the Yagami team in complete control of this contest. A big forward B from Yagami. Give up. And Iori once again just Give up. working a hold, just trying to shut his opponents down, pick them apart, and all three members of this team just coming after Iori here. And now Ice-T shooting Yagami into that corner turnbuckle. Giving the share zone an opportunity. And the share zone breaking Yagami's face with that foreign object. Looks like the share zone was the momentum shift this team needed. Repeated kicks to the chest. Hold on. The share zone not finished. And the share zone adding injury to insult with that Bronco Buster. And that is going to send Yagami back to his own corner, bringing Mature into this contest for the first time legally tonight. Ooh, big STO and Sweet planting the share zone. Give up. As Mature repeated kicks to the crown. Attempts to do so once again, but Drill is now there to make the save. And a big thumb to the eye from the share zone, but Mature bringing this fight back into the Yagami team corner. This is classic strategy from KOF 98. You want to make sure your teammates are on the screen at the same time as they are going to be that much more effective at breaking up holds. And Vice now bringing this fight back into that blue Gatorade corner. Give up. Give up. Share zone now. Kimura Hold is trying to break the arm of Vice. That is going to dovetail quite well with Ice T's offensive strategy as he is a submission specialist. If someone's joints are worn down, he is going to be laser focused at doing additional damage. But repeated kicks to the head from Vice, and now Vice just raking the face of the iceberg with those boots of hers. That's gonna send Ice-T back to his own corner to share zone in this match. Hold on just a moment here. Big double power bomb. And the share zone saving Ice-T from Vice, but oh, escaping that power bomb as well. And that's clearing out both aprons. Ten minutes ago. Mature cutting off the share zone, allowing Vice to get back to her own corner. The teamwork of this Yagami team is so spectacular. This team understands tag team wrestling. Yagami now once again, Maiden Masher, just crushing the body and spirit of the share zone. Oh, just a fraction of a second too late is uh, Drill and Ice-T pushing Yagami off, but just not quite in time. 
And that is going to put the King of Fighters TV title back into the hands of a King of Fighters team. That has not been the case since this championship's inception. So credit to the Yagami team for bringing this one home. And besting the team of Drill, Ice-T, and the Share Zone. And finally getting an understanding of uh, exactly what's been going on backstage. It seems like uh, somebody from the NWO office is in our production truck and looks like they want to run something. Hold on just a moment. You know something, Nick? I've, I've gave it some time and consideration. You know, I'm a very loyal and humble and hardworking person. In Blake's house, they've done nothing for me. They put me in bad matches and they haven't utilized my full potential. So, I am proud to say that Matthew is in W in. So uh, that is our show tonight, folks. Of course, uh, we've got the standard post-show dark match if you guys want to hang out in the chat. Um, so if you see some characters that you uh, very much want to see in the ring, uh, we can do that while uh, you guys hang out tonight. Velveteen Dream, an uh, excellent choice. Honestly, not mad at anybody on the blue side of this match. Let's see, uh, May Borowski. I am totally cool with that. All right, uh, let's go ahead and get into this dark match and. Gotta say, like, as far as yeah. advancing storylines go, oh, excuse me, this was one of my better episodes. As, like, I feel like things are actually starting to move. Whereas, like, the last few weeks, things kind of felt like they were in a bit of a holding pattern. And total credit to James, Nick, uh, Gatekeeper, especially, and uh, Zero as well, for, like, kind of giving some suggestions for storylines and um, especially uh, Nick, James, and Matt for submitting some uh, videos I can run during the stream. Like, that makes it so much easier to tell stories when, one, like, there's a little bit more direction and, two, I can have some, like, outside of match stuff to work with. So, to that end, I feel like this episode was a very successful one. Um, there were a couple things I would have liked to have gone differently. Um, I actually legitimately was not expecting the Terrell A-Man match to be as competitive as it was. Because kind of the narrative we're working with right now with Terrell is like, hey, he's um, like, he appears weak. Like he hasn't participated in the singles division because he's trying to like protect his title. Like, but then he had a excellent contest with A-Man, who is just an absolute force of nature. So might have to kind of tweak that storyline a little bit. But um, despite that, like, things definitely starting to move along a little bit. The 
But yeah, I feel like uh, I should stream Night in the Woods again. That's a good-ass game. And I feel like the heat on that game has definitely died down. To where, like, I can stream it and not get fucking Gamer Gators in my Twitch chat. Because that was a thing that happened when I streamed that game last. No, like, yeah. like Gamer Gators, as in, like, yeah. people that are, like, like, shitty gamers that, um, like, want to harass people with different opinions about, like, who should have rights and things. Yeah, that was that was a whole thing. But uh right now, May Borowski beating ass on Velveteen Dream. Which like I have not seen a lot of NXT lately. Like I've I got kinda burnt out on watching wrestling because WWE has just been absolutely miserable this past year. Um, so, like, I haven't even really been watching NXT lately. Oh, yeah, like, um, I don't know, maybe you missed it, but I was like, I feel like this week in particular, uh, like, a lot got accomplished in terms of advancing stories. Like, I really appreciate, like, I shouted out you specifically for, one, submitting a bunch of video, and also for, like, collaborating on some of the writing for this week. Um, like, because I have more people assisting with the writing, um, I feel like I'm able to do a little bit more narratively. Because, like, me as one person, it's really difficult to juggle a couple different storylines at once. Um, and if I've got a 10-match card, um, like, I appreciate the extra help of hey, here's a subplot we can, like, use up a couple matches to advance. Here's a subplot we can use up a couple matches to advance. Here's another subplot that we can fit together in, like, a couple matches. And then that takes a lot of the load off me trying to figure out how I'm going to write a 10-match card, like, week in and week out. So it is really helpful uh, when, like, people are submitting storyline suggestions and, like, submitting videos to kind of help tell the story. Um, because it is really limited with, like, how much narrative I can do in the context of a match. Like, uh, one that, like, I was pretty proud of this week was, hey, John Newton was wrestling in a singles match. Robert Walsh is going to come out with him as a manager because, hey, they've got each other's back in case the firm show up and attack them. Now, I did not set up the firm to interfere in that match, but, like... I can tell the audience that, hey, they're worried about these guys. So, like, it's a little detail that I can use in the game to help advance a story. But, like, you submitting three video packages and Matt Knapp submitting a video package and James submitting a video package, um, now it doesn't have to just be in the ring. Um, like we can advance some stories with sketches, too. None of them did, because this game is like that. Which is a shame, because, like... Actually, one of them not happening kind of, um... It completely changed the direction of a storyline I want to go th go with. Well, sort of. 
also like there's an there was an A plot in that match that only can be advanced by the run in. But there's a B plot in that match where like because the match played out the way it did, um like I can now move the storyline in a different direction. And that just means I kick the other storyline a little bit further down the road. Yeah, one thing I will say, like, it is convenient, particularly with, like, Zero's ideas for, um, uh, for, like, Maglo's character, that Maglo is on a two-week losing streak. So, like, that playing out the way it did kind of helps, um, advance another storyline. Like, like I said, I feel like a lot of little things got done this match, or this week, to, like, move some things around. Also, like, I don't know how well you guys could tell during the stream, but I have been sick, like, all day, and, like, running the stream was a pretty lousy experience, but, um, despite that, the show turned out great and pretty happy with, uh, how everything came together. Gotta be it. Oh, I'm after the night. That's a tough one. Like a legitimately tough call. Um, It's, to me, it's either Zero versus Colby or Terrell versus A-Man. Um, it's like Terrell versus A-Man was a way more competitive match than I thought it was going to be, which is like how much A-Man just ran over D-Mob when they fought. But like, this one was super back and forth, and it genuinely felt like it could go either way. Um... And uh, Zero versus Colby, also a really good match. You know what? I, that match was also really good. Yeah, Tonga versus Serpa is another one that, like, that match felt really close. Like, Drew was, like, wrestling the shit out of Tonga, and it did feel like he was a couple slams away from getting a pinfall victory. But, like, he just wasn't fast enough to outpace Tonga striking, which is what that match should look like. Absolutely wild, like Velveteen Dream and May are just like beating the hell out of each other. Two purple rainmakers, but both of them. Oh, this gotta be it here. 
Purple Rainmaker. One, two, three count full. Yeah, like if you want to uh, do more, um, if you want to pitch more stuff in, like in regards to like what the Knicks Wrestling Organization special event's gonna look like, uh, definitely take that to Discord because I'm gonna be going off like, off air pretty shortly. Um, but yeah, I definitely feel like that is a match that would make sense to be in a cage or have some kind of stipulation. But uh, let me uh, go ahead and open up this, see if anybody is streaming that I want to throw you guys at. You know, there's a couple streams that I'm probably going to be watching. Um, shit, uh, Lexi's still streaming. I am definitely going to tune into that as soon as I go off air. But I don't know how much you guys are interested in like a lefty streamer dunking on capitalists and libertarians but that is what I'm gonna do but I'm gonna I'm not gonna throw you guys at Lexi uh, in fact I'm just gonna probably go off air move some stuff around in some stables that uh, were set up to do some run-ins that never happened but um, so I guess my usual uh, spiel here, um, we do this every Sunday night at uh, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, I will be taking next Sunday off um, just to kind of get a long weekend for the uh, Christmas holidays. So expect me back online in two weeks, probably. Um... Although, shit, let me see the calendar real quick, because I think probably gonna that might cross over with my Wrestle Kingdom party. Um, I will probably be streaming on the 5th, but we'll see. Because the 4th is Wrestle Kingdom, and if that is a like 8-hour show, I'm going to watch that in two nights. But we'll... I will have that figured out. Assume I will be streaming on the 5th and every Sunday night um, at 7.30 p.m. Eastern, twitch.tv slash Monday Cindy. Um, that is true. Um, don't hate that idea. I don't know. We'll figure out what, uh, what the 5th looks like, and I'll get you some more details what my Wrestle Kingdom party is going to look like, because I am hosting again this year. Um... I have been streaming MechWarrior 5 and Battletech on and off, um, kind of arbitrarily over the course of the week. So if you see me online for that, uh, hope you tune in. Uh, but otherwise, um, hope to see you guys on my Sunday streams. I will catch you all later.